Hey guys, it's Miss K again. Um, today we are going to talk about lesson 1.2, which is next in our sequence of Amplify lessons. So I'm going to um, share the slides with you so that we can go through them so that you know exactly what to do, since I won't be able to be in front of you doing it. Um, and um, I'm going to explain all the activities and the assignments that you're going to have. Uh, these are due on Friday. Okay. So, <clears throat> this is again lesson 1.2 um, introducing ecosystems. We're going to talk about the problem that we're facing. So, remember how in our last unit we worked for a fictional company? We are going to be doing something similar this unit. And also, um, I wanted to put in our anchor phenomenon for you in the beginning. Um, remember, a phenomenon is um, something you can observe, but isn't the easiest things to explain. So just like our chromatography, we did a lot of work on figuring out how to explain that. So the phenomenon for this unit is that um, jaguars, sloths, and the cecropia trees in a reforested section of a Costa Rican rainforest are not growing and thriving. <clears throat> so, um, remember in this unit, we are taking on the role of ecologists, scientists who study ecosystems, ecologists observe ecosystems to draw conclusions about them. So remember, um, we're going to do our part in order to draw conclusions about them. So we're focusing in on Costa Rica. So you can see from this map that Costa Rica is in a country, is a country in Central America. And this is a photograph of an ecosystem there. So what kind of ecosystem do you think this might be? You said a rainforest, you are correct. So once we observe a picture, we have to think about what we're actually looking at. So for us as ecologists, we're gonna be looking at living things or organisms. Um, so what kind of organisms do you think might live here? We'll be discussing that in our Zoom chat tomorrow. These are some parts that make up the rainforest ecosystem in Costa Rica. So how do you think these might interact with one another? I want you to think about that when we're going forward, because for the next few weeks, we're going to try to solve a problem in that ecosystem. So although this exact problem is made up, problems very similar to this happen with real ecosystems all the time. So again, we're gonna take on the role of ecologists working for Natural Resources Rescue, a fictional organization that works to protect and save fragile ecosystems around the world. So even though Natural Resources Rescue isn't real, there are many groups like it in the world. So this is a project report from Natural Resources Rescue about the problem in a part of Costa Rica. Um, and the project area was originally a healthy rainforest. Then as you can see in the photo on the top, the cattle ranchers burned down the rainforest so they could use the land as grazing area for the cows. On the bottom, it's a picture of the project area today. So what do you notice? Look at how different those pictures look. So several years ago, the cattle ranchers left and took the cows with them. The ranchers were asked to plant trees so the area would become a rainforest again. So as you can see in the photo, in the photo, some trees called cecropias um, and other rainforest plants are slowly starting to grow again and rainforest animals have begun to come back. So again, this is it 10 years ago. And this is it today.
So Natural Resource Rescue worked with volunteers to replant the project area, and they brought in young cecropia trees and other important rainforest plants and planted them. So in many parts of the world, people have done reforestation projects like this, and the forest has grown back and thrived. So next, we're going to look at some information. Um, sorry, comparing the project area to a healthy rainforest nearby. The area nearby was not burned for cattle ranching and remains in its original state. Okay, so this table compares the numbers of several organisms, living things in those two areas. But what are you noticing about the numbers? If you remember when we're looking at data tables, we have to really just notice and then wonder. We're not analyzing right away. Okay, so it's showing us many jaguars, three toed sloths, and cecropia trees were found in the project area and in a healthy area nearby. The area nearby was not burned down for cattle ranching and remains in its original state. So what are you noticing about the information in this table? So now this table shows the average weights of jaguars and sloths in two areas. So one of them is in um, a project area and the other one is in the healthy rainforest. So we will be comparing those two sets of data. So now, think back to the information we saw about the number of living things and the weights in the project area in the healthy, um, and in the healthy rainforest area. What do you think is meant by the animals are not growing and thriving in the project area? That is going to be our job as ecologists to figure out why. Why aren't they growing? Why aren't they thriving? What are they missing? So this is something I'll bring up during our Zoom chat um, so that I can see your responses and really talk to you about what it means. Um, and I really want you guys to think about it because in all ecosystems, there are living things and they interact with one another. So we have to think about what's going on. And it's not really about the, um, just like doing the work and handing it in. I want you guys to really, really think about what I'm asking you. And um, I know you've been researching different ecosystems in ELA. So I want you to bring that to the table when we're talking about rainforests here. So our chapter one question is, why aren't the jaguars and sloths growing and thriving? Okay, and now, we were, if we were still in school, going to set up our own class terrariums. So a terrarium is, like in these two pictures, a collection of small plants growing in a transparent or clear sealed container. So, it's a closed environment, which is very important and can actually be used to illustrate how an ecosystem works, much like a model. So we would have made that. Now, I'm going to create one um, for us to be checking on weekly. So that's really important so that you guys can see. Um, I got two examples in these pictures of rainforest ecosystems inside of a terrarium, because if you Google terrarium, you can come up with all sorts of different um, versions of it, but these are the ones that will be closest to the one that we create. Now, um, obviously we can't bring a rainforest into our classroom, even though we were going to try. Um, I will try to make one, but I did wanna talk about the materials that would have been inside of it. So we were going to be putting nutrient-rich soil in, alfalfa seeds, grass seeds, leaf litter, which is on the tray in a little baggie, which is um, just leaves that have fallen off trees, maybe to the side of it. And they, in the rainforest, they create their own kind of layer um, on the ground. And those are important. And we're gonna talk about that later on. Um, but those would have been placed in there as well, a large container with a lid. And then with the jobs that everyone would have had when we created the terrariums, 
we would be doing moisture checks. So is the soil moist enough? Um, so when we do our weekly checks, when I create it, I'm going to have to be checking to see, does it need more water? Do I need to make the soil more moist? If not, then it's doing well. So this would have been our jobs. To observe um, our terrarium that we made, but because we can't do that, we are going to look at three different examples of ecosystems. So when we observe, again, we use any of our five senses to gather information about something. Now, we cannot go visit a pond, we cannot go visit a desert, and we cannot go visit the rainforest as of right now. So we're going to be using our um, site to look at these pictures and to observe and discuss what we think the drawings are showing us, okay? What are you observing? So this is going to be part of your homework where you're looking at the investigation, pages four through six. One is a pond ecosystem, one is a desert, and one is the rainforest. Then you are going to look at all three and you're going to make comparisons. How are they the same? How are they different? Okay, so um, if you are labeling anything, make sure to take a picture of it or you can draw and write inside your investigation notebook if you have it. I know some of you said that you don't have it because um, it either wasn't in your bundle or you didn't pick it up. That's okay. Um, don't worry about it because I've created a Google Doc to go with this assignment so that um, it'll just make a copy for you and you can go ahead and type in your observations for it on your own. Okay, so that is the end of that lesson. but. I think it's very important that you come to me for any questions that you have. I will be doing this again for lesson 1.3 because you'll be doing lesson 1.3 and lesson 1.2 for this week. Um, don't forget that we have our Zoom on Friday, which is our second session of science. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to be an ecologist along with you guys. Bye.